friends, and welcome to episode 1.4 of the Gorgeous Gourd series. This is the last skill building episode that we are going to complete together before you begin working on your final draft for this project. So in this episode, I'm going to be breaking down the steps of how to complete a drawing that has high accuracy and realistic looking shading. We're going to complete a practice picture together step by step before you're expected to complete the same steps on your final draft. So let's begin. First, we're going to complete the notes section labeled line drawing because we're going to begin by drawing the outlines of our pumpkins and gourds before we start adding values. The first note says use blank lines and a marking tool to help with placement. We're going to fill in grid lines. Next, the objects that are closer should be blank on the page and the objects that are farther away should be blank on the page. So this is referring to whether they should be lower or higher up on the page. So since this object is closest to us, the end of it is lower on the page compared to things that are farther away which are higher on the page. So objects that are closer should be lower and objects that are farther away should be higher. Next, focus on drawing the blank blank to help with accuracy. Sometimes your mind has an idea of what these things should look like and it tricks you into thinking that you already know how to draw those things. So something that you can do to help yourself focus on what you are actually seeing is by focusing on drawing the negative space. And this means that rather than looking at this pumpkin and remembering in our minds what a pumpkin looks like and trying to draw that from memory, rather than actually noticing what we see, we can focus on instead drawing the space that is around our pumpkin, which is called the negative space. So the object is the positive space, the background is the negative space, and we're focusing on drawing all of these intricate little triangles and shapes that we see in the background to help us draw the objects more accurately. Next, it says make sure everything in your contour drawing is blank before moving on to adding value. We need to make sure that before we start adding any value at all, we make sure that our contour drawing is accurate before moving on to adding value. To begin this drawing, we need to cut out two separate parts. First, we need to cut out our value scale, and then we're going to cut out a little marking tool that we will use that's found directly under this line drawing section. So I'm just going to cut out this rectangle directly underneath. I'm going to use that as a marking tool. To add my grid lines, I just connected the corners of each of these pieces. And I think that using diagonal grid lines is really helpful because you don't have to measure out any boxes to make them perfect squares. And it works well if you're going from different sizes. So that's why I like working with the diagonal grids. Once I've added the diagonal grids, I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to find the center by putting my ruler edge right in the middle of this X. And I don't even have to really measure. I can just sort of look to the side that's skinniest rather than the side that's thicker to see if it's even rather than tilted at an angle. So I'm gonna put my ruler right in the middle and draw the center line here. And I'm going to draw the center line here. Now that my grid lines are drawn, I'm going to utilize my scrap piece of paper or my measuring tool. So I'm going to use this to help me figure out where on the grid lines these objects intersect so I know where to place them. Because sometimes you'll draw something really accurately but it's the wrong size or in the wrong place. So this is just to help making sure it's accurate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the object that's in the front First, so the object that's closest to me and I'm going to look and see where I find any intersections with these grid lines so it intersects where it is touching 
those grid lines. So I'm going to use my scrap piece of paper and I'm going to always place the corner of my scrap piece of paper right into the middle of that X. And so I'm going to line it up with this first grid line and I'm going to add a mark here because that's where the stem touches. And notice that I'm also trying to extend the line at the same angle that I see it at. So I extended this line going down at that same angle rather than just placing a mark right where it ends. So I'm continuing the line of this pumpkin here and then we can't really see where it ends here so I'm just gonna call it good on that line. So I'm gonna move this over to that corner, make sure my corner of my scrap paper is right in the middle of my grid and I'm gonna continue those lines that I have added. Sometimes these lines can get a little bit confusing, so before moving on to adding the intersection lines where it touches this next line, I'm actually going to fill in some of the um, parts of this piece right here. So I'm going to fill in this little corner of the stem that we see, and we can fill in the space all the way up to where this line intersects. So I'm just gonna kind of come down and add this little triangle that's underneath and I can see that it connects with this line here then this kind of comes out and we can see how far away this is like if there's something that you're not quite sure the width of I'm going to place this right at the widest part and then I'm going to just bring that out here so I can see how far out I need to go so we've got that first bump than that second bump of our pumpkin. And I can even see how far down this shadow sort of ends. I'm gonna just make that mark so that I know just about how far down to come down. And then we've got this little section here. Now I've drawn in things just along this line. So I'm going to skip over to the next grid line and see where my intersecting lines are. Now, because I've got these marks here, I need to erase them so that it doesn't get a little confusing by having so many marks. I'm going to line up my corner just right in the center of that X, and I'm going to add the lines continuing at the angle that they are at where they intersect. So I'm going to bring this over, put my corner in the center, and continue those lines at the angle that they were intersecting at. Now I can also look at the center of this pumpkin and try to just find the widest width. So I'm holding this just straight out and I lined up my corner with the edge and made a mark. Now I'm gonna line up my mark, put that right in the center, and that's about the widest width that I'm gonna get. So I can make sure that the sizing is accurate here. Now, to help us draw this stem, I noticed that there's a little bit of a triangle shape that we have in our negative space. So this darker gray here is a little bit of a triangle and then it kind of comes back out and makes this arched little shape here that I'm gonna try to mimic. So I'm just bringing this stem down and trying to match this little arch that I see in the negative space. And I know that it ends here because we've added our intersecting line there. So now we've got that little edge. Then we're gonna bring this side out to meet this um, line that we've added to show ourselves how wide it gets. And then we're just kind of bringing this around and this is where it starts to get pretty dark. So we don't really know a whole lot of information through here. So I'm just gonna add a faint line. Now we're gonna go through and do that same step where we're adding a little marker along the intersection of our next line. So I'm going to line this up with the corner. I'm going to just look and see where it's actually touching this line. I'm gonna add the line going this direction that it is actually going in. And then I'm going to bring this over to this corner and add the line in the direction it was actually going in. So I can see that the stem touches here and here, and then the pumpkin touches just there. So now I'm gonna line this up in my corner, add my stem marks, and the top of that pumpkin section. So now that I see that it's coming down here and then comes out to the side, 
I'm gonna try to draw this triangle that I see in that gray space on the pumpkin behind it. So I'm really focused on the negative space. Then I can see that it wraps around to come down through here. So I'm focused on making that same arch shape. So if this was just cut in half, I'm looking at that half circle and trying to match that in the angles and the shape of it. Now we're going to add our stem and I'm going to just measure the height of our stem to make sure that I do that accurately. And we've got our stem and then we're gonna add just that space and I'm paying attention to the negative space that I see off to the side. We've got that line here and then a darker section of our stem here with a little bit of that top. Now we're going to move on to the pumpkin that's behind it. So I'm going to erase my lines. I'm gonna line up my corner and I'm going to add the intersection right here. And it's just coming up at this angle. Line up my corner with the center add this line at the same angle and I'm gonna do the next one as well just so that I can get that basic line shape so I'm going to erase line it up in the center and draw out that line at the same angle and now you can see it sort of gives me that arch already so it should be fairly simple for me to just connect those lines Now I'm going to move on to the next one. So I'm going to erase first, line up with the corner, and add that same angle. I'm just gonna connect that back. And I notice that this stem does dip down just a little bit here. So I'm gonna try to mimic that little dip. Now, I see that this comes down and almost touches here, but I need to get the height of that first. So I'm going to measure from that line up to the top where that pumpkin intersects. And something that will be helpful is to look at this darker gray corner and try to get that angle to be the same. So I'm going to just measure out from the corner or from that center line. So that's how far out it goes on the side. Now it touches almost at that center line and I'm looking at this darker gray triangle to help me get that shape accurate. And I'm going to add in this line because um, I'm making this lighter triangle right now that has like this darker little patch here. Then we've got this line that comes up. And I notice that it kind of dips down from here and kind of comes back up. And that's this next little twisty part. And then this kind of arches out from here, dips down, and then this has a bit of an edge with a darker little patch here. Now we're going to draw in our last pumpkin and we're going to do the same steps, making sure that we find a clean spot of our measuring tool. I'm going to just place this in the center and give myself that line. Place that in the center and give myself that line. So now I can add in this little corner triangle shape and it doesn't actually intersect any of the others, but it does almost touch this. So I'm gonna look at this darker corner right here where there's like that little bit of a gap. And then I'm just adding in that same angle. So we don't really see the bottoms here, but we do see the shadow. And I'm just gonna go through and add just a little bit of that shadow space kind of coming up and underneath our pumpkins and stretching out horizontally. 
From here, I need to add in the sections of each of these pumpkins so that I can utilize my grid lines before I erase them when I'm adding my values. So we're going to look at this center guy because he's got some pretty distinct pumpkin sections here. So I'm gonna add in just the little bumpy part of this stem at the base here. And we notice that there is this front center section that's quite rounded that is about the same thickness as the stem. So it rounds out and then almost touches this line and then comes down. It's a bit rounded at the bottom. Then this has a little bit of a gap before touching this line. So I'm gonna make sure not to make it too far over. Our next section is just touching the outside edge of that line, that diagonal line. And it comes out from here, from the center of that stem. The next one uh, connects and is almost horizontal going in between. So we've got that little sliver of a space behind. Next, we're gonna come over here and it has a skinny section that kind of comes out. And then I'm paying attention to the length and shape over here. And then we've got this side section that actually starts a little bit lower. Now we're going to move over to this one because it's just got that one little section. So we're gonna start that just right about here kind of add that in, maybe a hint of a line just going down the side here. I'm gonna start this first line on this back pumpkin right up against this stem. And that's really useful for me. And it kind of comes all the way up to that darker section of the stem. Now I'm gonna add this line that's just directly next to it and it has some space before getting to the center of our grid lines. This next section comes out on this side and then extends past this grid line and comes down and then starts to arch back just after the center of that grid line. Now we've got some faint little marks here, maybe one going up this way one kind of dividing this triangle and coming down, and then just some lighter lines off to the side. Now we started with this line because it was leading directly to our stem, which was a good marker for us, but now this next section starts right where these two um, sections of pumpkin intersect right here, so right at that corner, and then it comes all the way back to the stem here, but it kind of arches out at a curve before coming down. Uh, next we have this line that is just touching right here past this uh, horizontal line that kind of comes up. And then we've got this next one that's leading down this way. All right, and our last section we're gonna add is just right over here so we're going to start by adding this line that comes straight down. And then our next section comes out over here. Now that we've got all of our sections, we're going to go through and erase our grid lines very carefully. And when we make a pass that goes through something, we want to automatically redraw that line so that we don't lose any of our detail. So now I have erased all of my grid lines and I went through and sharpened up all of the lines and made sure that they were as accurate as possible before moving on to the next step. Once you're certain that your line drawings are accurate, we are able to move on to adding values. So we're going to just go through and fill out these notes so that you have an understanding of what we are working on now. So first we're going to think about which objects are blank and blank. Number their order in this drawing. So we're going to write, think about which objects are darkest and lightest. 
number their order in this drawing, which we'll do in a moment. Find the blank and lightly outline them with a blending stump. So we're going to look for the highlights and lightly outline them with a blending stump. Always start out blank than you think you need to. Always start out lighter than you think you need. Shade blank areas at separate times. Shade separate areas at separate times. Once the medium dark values are laid out correctly, use the blank to smooth them out and add the light values. Blending stump. Small amounts of dark, medium, and light should be visible in most areas of your drawing. The blank near the base of each object should be a full value scale. The shadow near the base of each object should be a full value scale. Next, we're going to take the value scale that we cut from the bottom of this page, and I just added hole punches to the center of each of them. And this is a really valuable tool because we can then hold it over the different parts of our picture and try to figure out which values match which section so that we know what values to use in our drawing. In our notes, it reminds us to go through and number our pumpkins in order from darkest to lightest. And looking at this, we do have one that has a combination of two different values. So that can be a little tricky, but we'll know that this one, the gourd has values of 10. And we can check that by holding this up over here and seeing that that's our darkest value. Over here is probably our next darkest and we can hold this up and try to figure out, okay, this one is about a seven to an eight, probably an eight. This one is our next darkest one, and we'll hold this over and realize that most of it is probably about a five. I'd say that's a nice medium tone. And then this last one has a lot of highlights, but I'd say overall, it's probably a four. One tip for knowing where to start when you're adding your values is to consider whether you're right or left-handed. And if you're right-handed, starting on the left-hand side and working your way to the right, that way you don't fill in something really great on this side and then move over to shading this and smear it really badly. So we're actually going to get started over to the left. And I like to start with my darkest areas. And for that, remember we use the 6B pencil. So I'm gonna get started with this shadow just directly under here, and I'm gonna lay that out, filling in a 10 value, which it looks even darker than our 10 that I printed on this value scale, but just know that it will be our darkest value, and it goes all the way underneath this pumpkin, but I'm gonna stop about halfway just so that I don't end up having a bunch of value that I'm then smearing with my hand as I'm working. Now I filled in my very darkest value and I'm actually going to start fading this out. And I'm making this more of a, maybe like a eight. And again, I am working with the 6B because these are the darker values. We always wanna work a little bit lighter than we think we're going to need to because you can always add another layer and it's much easier to do that than it is to go back and erase and start over. Now remember that we decided to stop about halfway. Now I'm going to get started working on this section, which seems a little bit complicated, um, but we really just need to follow along with our finger and I'm gonna just make an outline for myself. This part doesn't have to be perfect necessarily. We're just trying to really incorporate what we actually see rather than trying to make this part up. All right, now we're gonna come over to this side and then it does get skinnier. Now on this side, we don't have much, uh, just a couple little sways here and there, but over here when it's coming out, it does have a couple little dents and I'm gonna come out to this side where it's the thickest. It's about halfway in that section. And then kind of leaves a little section there. And then we've got this darker patch here now we also have a couple little spots that I'm gonna draw in, some very distinct marks that we want to include. 
like this funky little thing here. It looks like a little dancing person, I don't know. And then we've got a couple spots up here. So now that we've drawn in most of those distinct little patches, we're gonna go through and start adding in our number 10 value on this side. It's really quite dark. And we're just gonna make sure we go up to the edges I drew this half in with a number 10 value and now I'm going to hop over to this side and I'm going to just check and see, I'd say it's about a 9 on this other side, so still pretty dark. So I'm just going to go through and fill this in with a pretty dark value, but we do want it to be noticeably different from this side and we do notice that it gets a bit lighter up in this top section where it's got some sun shining on it and then it goes and fades to about a 10 down here. So this is gonna start off darker and then we're just gonna slowly start pressing lighter and lighter. And now over here this section starts out at a 10 and fades to an eight or a nine up here. Now at this point, we're gonna start fading and getting lighter. Now we're gonna go through and just fill in some of our darker patches. Now at this point, we're going to start filling in the medium tones that we see down at the bottom. It is a pretty smooth transition from the shadow into the gourd. So you don't really see any distinct lines of where they start and stop. And we notice that this kind of cuts across make this shadow, fill this in with that same type of value, I've got a bit of a darker section through here, and then a darker section on our stem. Now, something that I think is really helpful personally is to fill in the background and use that so that I don't have a white background and making it look so much lighter. So I'm going to take my 6B and I'm going to try to match that value coming in the background. I'm just going to fill in the entire background just to make sure that I'm doing it nice and evenly. So I'm going to start with my blending stump in my lightest areas, just fading out, and I notice it does go about to white. So I'm making sure that I make that transition there. And then I want to get rid of any of the texture that I've got started um, from using that 6B pencil down below. So I'm just using the side of my blending stump, and I'm working with small circular motions, and I'm pressing pretty hard to get rid of that texture. And remember that this was our darker side of that section of dark, and then this side was a little bit lighter, so I'm gonna press a little bit lighter through here. And then it does get a bit darker as we work our way down. Now over here, we're pressing really lightly because we've got this section that does fade just about to white, comes up and wraps around, is a little bit lighter, and then fades out to white right through here. We want that to be a nice smooth transition. And then we've got this darker medium tone. And as I see things that I need to adjust, I see I might need to come out into that space with dark just a little bit more. So I'm just gonna add that as I see it. I also notice that this edge kind of shows the outline for my pencil a little, so I'm gonna like rough that up a bit. And now I'm gonna just come back over to this side, start working in that dark. And over here we have a pretty dark medium, probably like a five. Then our stem has a little line in between, so I'm gonna use the point of my blending stump to help me add that. Now that I've blended it out, I am gonna just go back and reinforce some of these lines to make them stronger. I'm coming in and working in that darker shadow just a little bit farther down. Next, since I added that medium tone in the background, I am just going to take my blending stump and smooth that out. And I noticed that in the picture, there are some spots that are darker versus lighter. So I'm going to pay attention to that as I'm working. And I'm using the side of my blending stump rather than just the point because I want to make sure that I'm not doling the point of this blending stump too much. 
Next, I'm going to begin working on the shadow that's just in between these two shapes. And I'm doing that because I'm going to use some of that value to help spread it up and out while working with my blending stump since this is a much lighter value. So I'm going to pay attention to the fact that there is a little bit of a lighter section and that's sort of indicating um, the space between these two pumpkins. So I'm going to just leave that a little bit lighter in between, although not by much. Now I'm bringing this up and trying to pay attention to the angle that it ends at. So it's pretty close to that type of angle. So we're gonna help that fade out. All right, so I'm gonna do that in a couple of spots to help fill in this pumpkin in the back. So I'm gonna do that on this side as well. Now I'm gonna go through and add some lighter values just along the edges of these sections and maybe a little bit of like this medium tone just down at the bottom. I'm using really light pressure and a lot of circular motions to help that fade out nice and evenly. I'm gonna use some medium tone just up against this stem. And this has a bit of a darker edge. This one definitely has a darker edge. Now, I'm going to use my blending stump to help me reach a lot of these values because they're so much lighter. So I'm going to first start by blending out this darker medium. And I'm paying attention to what I actually see here as far as my values. And there's really no white in this one. It just fades out to a really light section. So I might even just use my blending stump like we said in the notes to kind of highlight where my highlights will be so that I don't fill them in. And I'm just gonna use that lighter tone up at the top to lead out to where this section is going to be filled in just a little bit lighter than that. Now this is a bit more of a medium tone Now I'm gonna bring some of these lines up that I had drawn in. I'm gonna kind of exaggerate this edge being rougher to accentuate the sections. I had some lines in here. This darker medium, which comes down for this lighter medium. Now this section is pretty dark. I probably need to come in with my pencil to help me fill this in, but it does fade out to that lighter tone. Probably add another layer just off to this side to help it match that medium. And I see that this section kind of tilts back in. This section has a bit of a value like up at the stem and this gets a bit darker than what I've got. And then we're going to be careful not to get this medium in the stem or the pumpkin beneath it. Now we've got this skinnier section that's darker right here, kind of lighter up against the edge. Now I'm going to take my 6B pencil and I'm going to just add a little bit more value over on this side because it is getting quite a bit darker as we go towards the right because that's where our shadow side is. So I'm going to add a little bit more value just along this edge of that section. I'm gonna add just a nice medium tone in between here that I can work on blending with my blending stump. And then I'm gonna help this transition out to white. And I'm gonna use my blending stump to help me create the rest of the values going up. Over here, I've got a really dark value. So I'm actually going to fill in 
this section is going to just be that solid black. And I'm gonna use my darkest value with my 6B pencil. And I notice that I do have this little highlight right here. So I'm gonna come through and add that. And I'm not gonna bring that dark value all the way up because I notice that we do have a bit of a highlight here as well. So I'm just filling in this dark section and then helping that fade out. And then this dark comes all the way up along this section. And then I'm gonna bring it, and I see it comes all the way down to about here. And it starts out pretty skinny and then it starts to get thicker. It comes down at an angle that sort of like touches this point. And again, that's our darkest value I'm varnishing and then it comes up again with this little section here and i can start working on fading this out to a medium tone now i'm going to leave this little bit of a highlight and come over to this side where it again starts just a little bit darker and then fades out to this medium tone. And then up here, this section comes all the way up to almost touching that stem and then gets just a little bit lighter in between. And I'm gonna help this fade out to white so that I can do the rest with my blending stump and have a nice smooth transition to start with. Next, I'm gonna darken up the top of this section here. And we've got just a bit of this value coming in here. We've got that highlight off to the left. Now I've got this section pretty much filled in. I've left some spaces for my highlights. So I'm actually gonna start with my highlights to make sure that I don't accidentally go over any that I shouldn't. So I'm paying attention to this highlight right here. So I'm gonna help that fade really lightly up to this edge. And then I notice that that highlight sort of disappears right about here. So I'm gonna help that transition to this lighter medium tone in the middle. And I'm not gonna fill it in as dark up at the top but I've got a pretty solid medium tone right through here. And then it does get quite a bit darker as we go down. And we've even got like a little line in the middle. So to help accentuate this line right here, I'm just gonna come in and add just a little bit of value blend that out with my blending stump. And then we've got this darker edge, which I think I need to darken up again. And then I'll use my blending stump to fade that out. Now, again, I'm gonna start by outlining my highlight here so that I don't accidentally go into it. I'm just gonna use my blending stump to very lightly go up to the edge here. So right now I'm up at the top. And then I'm just working on bringing this medium tone down and around. It does start to get quite a bit darker here, so I'm applying more pressure with my blending stump. And then that highlight disappears right about here. And then it gets pretty dark near this base. I don't think I went quite dark enough, so I'm gonna just take my 6B, bring in some more of this dark here. Work to help that fade out. 
And then I've got this darker section along the edge that I'm just darkening up a bit. All right, and I think I might go just a little bit more of a medium in that highlight because it isn't fading out to white really, just getting lighter. Now I'm going to hop over to this section. And again, I'm starting with my highlight so I don't accidentally fill it in. This one is just a medium tone. It's definitely not white, so I'm leaving it a little bit lighter. Filling in my medium tone all the way up to the top. And then this darker section fades out to that light medium. Now I'm going to just look for any final missing touches that I can go back and add. Now I'm going to come in and work on my stem. So we're going to start by adding in this section of dark. And then it fades out. I've got a couple little lines here. And I'm going to switch to my HB at this point so that I can have finer details since this section is kind of small. And then I'm going to come up to this section where there's a little bit of a highlight. So I'm filling in the dark in between. I'm making sure to leave like this little section of light. And then it does get darker. And then we've got another little highlight here. And then this last section has a couple lines coming up before it goes dark. So now I'm gonna take my blending stump and I'm just gonna pull some of this value down into this triangle and a little bit up. And then I'm gonna blend down at the bottom here just to make it a little bit more of a medium tone and then right over the top of that line, just to kind of blend it out a bit. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take my 6B pencil and I'm going to start by just going through and filling in the darker patches. So over here, we don't have a whole lot of medium, just a little bit kind of stemming from here and then we've got a darker line just right over here that's on the left hand side of this section so i'm filling in that medium tone it kind of comes around like in a rounded patch and then it's underneath on this side as well now over here is where it starts to get quite a bit darker so on the inside of this line so coming towards the left is where we're going to add this darker patch. So it's pretty thick, just right through here. And then it's gonna slowly start increasing in width near the bottom. And then we're gonna just help this fade out. And remember that we do our lightest values with only our blending stump. So I'm gonna fade to white before I need to so that I can add in my light values with my blending stump. Now over here, it starts off at this corner, it's pretty dark. And then I'm just gonna slowly wrap this around and kind of bring it down into this corner. So I'm getting pretty dark at the base. And I'm just gonna kind of bring up that medium tone and help it fade out to white. Now over here, we've got a bit of a shadow in between these two sections. And then this section is very dark underneath. And I'm just gonna help this kind of round out through here. So we can see this section is just sort of rounded out. 
and then the rest is just super dark 10 value. And it goes in between these spaces here with that 10. And then right about here is the darkest patch and there is just a little bit of light right in between here. So I'm gonna not fill it in super dark just for that little patch and it's gonna be just a very subtle light area. So still about like an eight or a nine. And then I'm bringing this shadow out just horizontally. You can see that it is just ending in like the same level as the paper. I'm going to work on filling in the lighter values of my blending stump. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna start on this side. I've got just this edge that's a little bit like medium that fades out. This corner right here is a bit darker and then comes out along this edge. This starts right underneath and is rounded out. And it doesn't actually fade to white really, it's just a light one maybe. So now I'm gonna come over to this edge and I'm gonna darken it up right up against that line. And then I'm gonna try to leave this highlight right here Help that fade out. And then we're gonna get darker underneath in kind of a rounded shape. So I see I can get a little bit darker over here now I'm going to come over here where I've got this super dark line and I'm going to blend that out. And then I'm going to work on just smoothing that out to a medium. And notice that the dark comes out at sort of a diagonal. And then I'm just gonna fill in this medium tone and press lighter to get to my little highlights here. Now I see that I kind of lost some of the detail over here, so I'm gonna add another layer and just bring back in some of that really dark. I'm gonna bring it out at an angle. All right. Next, I'm going to work on filling in just the dark on this side. Got that little triangle that comes up and then it fades out to a medium before it gets towards that highlight. All right, I might darken up this corner just a little bit again. And then our last section is filling in just this lighter medium tone up near the top and this little bit of a highlight just right here on the corner. We're just helping that fade out. And then blending in this little corner here. Now we can also use our blending stumps to kind of smooth out the value that's underneath as the table. Now I'm going to switch to my HB to do these fine details of the stem. So I'm really paying attention to what I actually see, which is this line coming out, getting a little bit thicker and then a little bit thinner as it comes down to the bottom. This section has a little triangle of white before it reaches medium. So I'm going to kind of add a medium tone in between. And then this darker line that comes up past the first one. And then we've got another little highlight right here and a bit of a dark edge along this horizontal patch. I'm bringing this darker line up and extending it just past the stem line here. I'm also sharpening that outside edge of the stem 
and I see that I did need to go a little bit darker behind it here. So I just filled that value in just a little bit more to help the stem stand out. All right, now our last step is to fill in the values over here. I'm gonna again start with my 6B. I'm gonna begin by adding the darker values just along this section. Starting here and working my way up. It's got a fairly thick section of darker to medium tone values. And then it kind of rounds out right through here So I'm going to work on adding my medium tones. There's a little bit of a darker section here. And the highlights are kind of collected through this section and I'll show you how to add some of that texture in a moment. We're going to add that medium tone right through here. Now we're going to take our blending stump and we're going to fill in the remaining medium tones. So I'm starting with that dark and I'm going to just pull out some of those medium tones. We don't really have a whole lot of white, just a few little patches here, so I'll show you how to change those. So now we're gonna come in and add some texture where we see it here, just to create some textured highlights. Now, now that I've added in my texture, I see I could probably go just a little darker on some of these values and especially near the bottom. So I'm really gonna darken this area up and try to round out that section near the base. Now we'll do one last pass over everything just to compare it to the drawing itself and see if there's any areas where I might be able to like, just go back and make it look a little bit more realistic, closer to the actual drawing itself. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this episode. I hope that these skills are helpful and that you're able to apply them while working on your final draft. Thanks for watching.